Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Bircher Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today I'm gonna to be painting waterfall in fall. <laughs> I'm sipping on some matcha tea. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you can find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, cobalt blue, chrome yellow, Mars black, fire red, and burnt umber, which I usually call brown. And you can certainly switch up these colors as well, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a standard number two pencil that I'll be using for some drawing. And then I have three brushes from my personal brush line, which is Michelle the Painter brushes. I have a three quarter inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number six bright brush and it's a synthetic flat brush, but it's called a bright brush. And then I have a number uh, one fan brush and uh, it's natural bristles on my fan brush. I will refer to these as fan, bright, and bristle as I go through the painting process. And of course you can switch those up as well if you'd like to. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I will be providing you with a few additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you could purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same size and type of canvas to the same type of paints and brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be drawing an outline for our landscape. I'm gonna be using my pencil, but you could certainly use any drawing utensil that is comfortable to you. I'm gonna be guiding you through a series of markers and we're just gonna connect those markers. What we're really looking to do on this step is give ourselves three separate sections. One is gonna be for the upper portion of the landscape, which is gonna include our sky and some out of focus trees. Then we're gonna have a big section of the rock ledge and then we'll have a section for our water. So I'm gonna find myself a, about halfway up or down the left-hand side of my canvas. So for me, that's about right about here. I'm gonna go about two inches above that, make myself a marker. Then on the right-hand side, I'll find myself about halfway up or down my uh, canvas, and I'm gonna go above that about an inch. I'm gonna connect these two with a pretty um, organic type of a line, but I wanna have a flat type of spot where my where my waterfall is gonna emerge from. So if I find myself about the center of my canvas uh, on the top and come straight down from that, right along the height of these two markers and go over to the right a little bit and up, I'm gonna create a little bit of a flat spot in through here. So this is gonna be where my waterfall emerges from. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kinda connect this with a, you know, a rock formation type of a line or a, jagged type of a line. I'm going to come up a little bit from this side in through here and then just do make whatever kind of organic type of a line you want in order to meet this one over in through here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to the bottom of my left hand side of my canvas and come up about three inches somewhere in here and then on the bottom right of my canvas I'm going to come in about oops there goes my pencil right in my water cup my eraser is wet now so I'm going to come in about two inches on this bottom right hand corner. I'm gonna find myself about the center of my canvas at the bottom, so somewhere in this vicinity for me. And I'm gonna come up, I would say, uh, almost a quarter of the way up. This is about uh, halfway, so I'm maybe about 
three inches below my halfway marker. So somewhere in, well, somewhere in this vicinity, quarter to a third of the way up is good enough. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect here to over here with a curved type of line, and then from here to here with a curved type of line. This is gonna represent our water area. And that's all I'm gonna be doing for my outline. You can certainly adjust this all you want. We're gonna be using our large brush, our large bristle brush for the next step so you can get that out and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be painting the base coat for our water, our rock, our foliage, our background foliage, and our sky. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are all of them. <laughs> I'm gonna be using black, red, yellow, brown, blue, and white. And I'm gonna be making one custom color, which is gonna be for my water. I'm gonna be making a nice, earthy, beautiful, foresty green for my water. We'll be using black for the rock, and then we'll be using a bunch of colors in this top section. I'm gonna start by making my custom green because I will be using it in the water as well as up in the tree foliage. So here is my green that I'm going for. It is this really pretty dark um, forest kind of green. How I got to that was a whole bunch of my yellow and a tiny bit of black paint. I suggest when you're adding the black paint into it that you, that you add a very tiny bit at a time because if it goes too dark, you can't reverse it, but you can continue to add black until it gets as dark as you want. And then you just start spinning it around and it turns into this beautiful forest green. That's a little bit too light, so I'll add just a teeny tiny touch more of black and it'll go right into the vicinity that I am looking for. So once you've got that color in through there, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use that green to paint the base coat of my water. So I'm just gonna be using a left to right brush stroke on this base coat. It will look a little bit streaky at this point, but this is again, just the base coat, so you don't have to worry about that. We are gonna be doing a second layer on top of it with more details to it, but I'm just looking to give myself a base coat, so I'm just going left to right. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wash and dry my large brush, my bristle brush, and I'm gonna load it with black paint, and I'm gonna be painting in my rock section. So I'm gonna start up at the top and just give myself a nice kind of thin, uh, line for the top of my rock formation. I, I say thin because not in width wise, but in paint wise. So I'm not using a ton of paint. So it dries kind of on the quicker side and I'm, and I'm purposely doing this because I know the next thing I'm going to do is my top section. So I don't necessarily want to run into wet paint at the top of here. It's okay if I run into the paint, but I don't want to smear a lot of black paint all over the place, which is why I'm doing the top first and I'm using a thin layer of paint up at the top. So that way, by the time I get up there and I start working on that upper region, it will most likely have dried enough for me to bump into it if I need to. And then I'm just painting in the rest of this area with black paint and the quantity on the rest of here doesn't matter because it's gonna be a while before we touch this center area anyways. And when I get to the water area, I'm just gonna bump this into it. It, it can overlap it. It doesn't have to be a clean line. They can merge together. We're, again, there's gonna be lots of other information that we're gonna be incorporated around here. So I'm not going for anything fancy, just a nice base coat that we can build off of with future steps. So just kind of closing off the sections in through there so there's no uh, huge gap between my rock and my, or my ledge and my water area. And then just finishing up this section in through here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to wash and dry my brush, it's looking pretty good. And again, I'm okay if I detect some streakiness in through there, just wanna get the majority of it. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be painting the, um, the sky area and the out of focus foliage of the trees that are kind of deeper in the forest than the rock ledge itself. Your brush doesn't have to be super clean, but I do kind of, uh, suggest that you kind of give it a good squeeze in your paper towel so you don't have much water on it. I'm gonna start in my lightest area, which is gonna be where my waterfall is gonna go, right in through here, and then I'm gonna work my way to the dark 
I'm gonna start with white in through here and then I'm gonna work my way white to blue and then I'm gonna work my way out into the forest. So I'm starting with a little bit of white paint on my brush and I'm gonna most likely for the majority of this be using a circular type of brush stroke. And if you detect that you have a little bit of uh, the remnants of other colors within your white paint, like it looks like I might have still a tiny bit of green paint in my brush, which is fine. It just makes it look even more natural. I'm gonna now pick up white with a touch of blue paint. And when I say touch, just a itty bitty bit on the corner of your brush. This is gonna allow for the illusion of the sky to be poking through this beautiful uh, country setting or scenery. So again, white with a teeny tiny bit of blue paint. Again, so little that you could even just wipe it off on your, on your paper towel. I'm just looking for a little tiny illusion of the sky to be poking through in through here. I don't need much at all, just an itty bitty bit. Then I'm gonna put a tiny bit more white on my brush just to make sure that they blend in nicely together. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start working my way out towards the foliage. I'm going to right now pick up a tiny bit on my dirty brush of white, green, and yellow. So I have a little tiny bit of white, green, and yellow on my brush, and I'm gonna be applying it in this circular type of pattern. So what I'm in essence doing, white, green, and yellow, is going back on my brush. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side over here. What I'm really doing is just adding these brighter leaves or the illusion of the brightness to these trees next to my sunshine. And now as I am going further away from my sunshine, I'm gonna start picking up a little bit more green on my brush. So I have a little bit more green on my brush. I didn't pick up any more yellow or white, and I'm just kind of rubbing this in in a scrubbing type of brush stroke. I'm picking up more green on my brush in through here. As this side, I'm almost done. I'll put a little bit of red in a minute, but this side, I kind of wanted to look like we've got autumn colors in through here. So I'm gonna sporadically kind of leave some open spots. Right now I'm gonna pick up red and brown on my brush. Not a lot, just a little bit of red and brown. And I'm gonna add some darkness over here on this, on this left hand side. Again, I'm just using a circular type of brush stroke. I want this to look out of focus. I want it to look like we're deep in the forest, so, and that these are just out of focus. So I don't need to put much detail in them at all. Right now, I'm just kind of going up and through here. Now what I'm gonna do, I've got red and brown on my brush. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of yellow on my dirty brush, and this is gonna create almost like some orange tones in here. So you can play with the tones of this foliage by using red, yellow, that's gonna make some orange as you go through the process. You could pre-mix some other colors if you wanted to. Right now, I just keep picking up a little bit of yellow in order to incorporate some of these brighter colors in through here. If I wanted more orange, I could certainly pick up a little bit more orange. Now, I just wanna kinda of close off these edges, so I'm picking up a tiny bit of white paint on my dirty brush, and I'm just gonna kinda of dab almost a little stippling type of brush stroke on the edges of here, just to make sure that I fill in those gaps a little bit with my dirty brush. So if there is little spots poking through, my other trees will be able, to, we won't have any unpainted canvas and it looks like it's nice and finished. So I'm gonna do it over here as well. Just a little bit of white on my dirty brush, just giving me the edges of these trees to make sure that I fill in any gaps. And then I'm gonna be using, uh, let's see, we're gonna be using our meet the uh, bright brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry, or put this large brush away, take out your bright brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is the first step <laughs> of our rocks. So I'm gonna have probably two or definitely two, maybe three steps to the rocks, but the first step is going to be laying out where all the ledges are, putting a base coat to maybe some flat spots versus the um, giving the, the interior of this rock formation kind of its curved look. So I'm not gonna be going 
in for a ton of detail on this step. I'm really just kind of putting in some muted colors which are going to allow me to um, start the formation of the rocks. On a future step, we'll come in and put a lot more detail. We'll put some little moss stuff. We'll put some little wet twinkly highlights on the rocks. But this, t this pass, we're just gonna be kind of putting the rock formation in place. I'm using my bright brush. You could use a round brush for this or a regular flat brush, which will look similar to this, only its bristles are a little bit longer. I'm gonna be using this because it's gonna allow me to have a lot of different um, kind of elongated shapes with clean edges to them, which is what is going to resemble rocks in my head. <laughs> what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be using brown, white, blue, and red. And if I use any other colors, I certainly will let you know and we'll go from there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with mostly brown and a teeny touch of white on my brush. So I just loaded my brush with a lot of brown and a little bit of white on the tip of my brush. What, as I'm creating these um, rock ledges and um, kind of rows of rocks in this area, I'm in my head I'm thinking that this is like a cove, so the formation is gonna be kind of curved like this, and my waterfall is gonna be coming over here. So I'm gonna have a lot of slender kind of ledges in through here. And then on the edges, I'm gonna have a couple of flat spots as if, you know, maybe somebody could walk out on the on that rock and maybe look over into the cove. I'm also gonna have a little bit of flat area up at the top um, as if that's, you know, the top of the rock formation. So I'm starting with this brown and white on my brush just to give me kind of an idea of what I wanna do. So I'm gonna put a little bit of a light area up in through here. I know that my, my fall is gonna come down here, but I still want stuff behind it. I want you to be able to see some of the detail behind it. So I just picked up a little bit more uh, brown with a touch of white, and that's gonna be my color combination for the majority starting this step. I'm not pre-mixing a color right now because I wanna be able to have some lighter spots and some darker spots as I go through this initial pass. So mostly brown with a tiny bit of white on my brush and I'm gonna start, again, I'm starting up top and as I kinda of come down in through here, I'm gonna to start to pull little uh, additional kind of rows, so to speak, of the, of the rocks. When, when I'm painting rocks in my head, I'm always thinking these are rocks. They don't need to be perfect. There's gonna be a lot of different tones and, and stuff to them. So I'm never concerned about making them perfect, but I do wanna go in with a plan. So if this is my, uh, my area where my fall is gonna come down, maybe I've got a rock, a lighter platform of the rock up in through here. As it's coming down, maybe there's um, little rows of more slender rocks in through here. Maybe I've got another little ledge, I would say maybe somewhere in through here that maybe there's another area where the fall is gonna come down and then maybe pop over this. So if you want your, your falls to have multiple layers, you can also give them these additional kind of platforms as they're coming down. Maybe I've got some additional rocks coming down in through here, making the um, the falls kind of go in, in front. So you can really, you know, you don't have to 100% plan it out as you're going, but knowing what you in essence kind of want that end result to be that my fall is coming down here, maybe it hits a rock here, so I've got a couple of different tiers going on. I definitely wanna have maybe a big platform kind of rock over on this side, so I'm just gonna put a lighter area in through here, and then maybe we've got some faint little uh, rows of the rocks. As I'm running out of paint, when I, you know, I did this big one in through here, and then I felt myself running out of paint. So I can use that little bit of remnants to put almost these little rows or of these rock tiers throughout the rest of the area. I am also gonna be having a lot of foliage or like I'm gonna have some areas where there's some moss popping out of these rocks. So at, when I do that, that, that can help to hide things, it can help to um, create more detail in stuff. I'm gonna put a little bit of a rock down by the water in through here. So I'm creating these lighter areas that are allowing for 
um, it to look like those are flat surfaces. If you want the rock to look like it's kind of coming in a downward motion or maybe this rock sticks out, I'm putting these uh, directional brush strokes to tell you that, okay, well this is the, the ledge in through here and maybe it drops off. So you can use these directional brush strokes to tell the story of these rock formations and what's happening to them. I think I'm gonna have another big one over in this uh, area over in through here. So again, just brown and white is what I've got on my brush right now. And once I've got this one in through here, I can kind of get it to do whatever I want. It can kind of travel down here and maybe meet another rock down in through here. So you can really have fun with the, um, the formation of it. Right now, I'm just putting everything into place. Maybe this one's got a couple of ledges kind of coming down and meeting the water down in, in here. So maybe somebody can walk down those ones. So you can imagine it to be whatever way that you want. Just adding these light spots is helping me to just plan what I want. So maybe I've got um, a little bit of a ledge up into here. And again, I'm only picking up white and brown at this at this juncture so that way I can get almost like a roadmap of sorts going on in through here and in a second I'm going to incorporate one more color before on this step and then we'll, we'll move on to another step. So that's looking pretty good. I've got a pretty good formation. Now what I'm gonna do with my dirty brush is I'm gonna make myself like a plum type of purple color, which I have right here. How I got to this was I used a little bit of blue, red, that's gonna get me going. And also, I, because I had the brown and white on my brush, you put a little bit of brown and white in there as well. So you're gonna get yourself this plum type of color and it helps to accentuate those rocks. We're gonna be using um, additional colors later, but this is gonna, again, get, just give me a, a, a second tone within these rocks. I'm not gonna do it on all of them. I'm just gonna kind of sporadically put this color within um, my rock formation trying not to confuse the look of it, but definitely using this plum type of color to give me some depth and dimension in these rocks, uh, allowing for maybe them to feel like they're reflecting some of the autumn colors on it. Maybe they've got some different type of minerals in them to give them the, this beautiful look to them. And then we are gonna be using the same brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry this medium brush or this bright brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what I'm gonna do for the next step is I'm gonna finish the rocks. We'll be putting moss and stuff on in a future step. This will just be the actual rock part. <laughs> I'm gonna use my bright brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are that custom plum color, definitely some white, blue, maybe a little bit of red, and that might be it. Maybe some brown. <laughs> I'll call them out as I use them. What I'm gonna be doing is I want these rocks to look wet because there's water coming and falling on top of them, so a wet surface is going to reflect colors from its entire surrounding. So I can use the blue from my sky and put it on sparkly spots on the water. I can use red from what's gonna be my autumn red trees and I can put some little red sparkly marks on my rocks and that's gonna make them look like they're on the wetter side. I also wanna put highlights on my rocks to make sure that I have enough form to them, make sure that the ones that I want to be visible and popping out enough are. I think I'm gonna put a little bit of extra lightness up on the top in through here to indicate that my bright sky is kind of shining upon those rocks as well. I'm gonna be using this bright brush and I'm never gonna have a lot of paint on my brush at any one time. So as I'm adding these, these areas, I'm just gonna be using a little bit of paint on my brush and just kind of dabbing it on there. Um, this way I can stay in control and I can switch colors whenever I want to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with um, adding a little bit of extra highlight up and through here and then on some of my rock surfaces. I'm gonna pick up white, with a tiny bit of brown. So again, I have hardly any paint on my brush and I'm just gonna kind of start adding my brighter areas up 
where I want to up in through here and I'm kind of using a, a jagged kind of left to right type of brush stroke to give myself some flat type of um, marks with semi clean edges to them. I don't need them to be super clean, but in my head, these these particular rocks that I'm doing are of a smoother type of a surface. So that's why I'm allowing, um, I'm using this brush to its advantage that way. I do know I want to get this a little bit lighter in through here because it's towards the top and I want it to look like it's kind of billowing over with my rock formation. Again, just picking up white with a tiny bit of brown on my brush at this point, trying to get in some real lighter areas in through here. So that's looking pretty good. I am going to amp up a couple of ledges in through here. So maybe I'll put a little bit lighter area in through here. And again, just kind of adding some, some lightness where I feel I want the lightest areas to go. I'll add my other colors in a minute, but this is just making sure I have some really bright areas. Maybe we've got a couple down in through here that are just kind of catching some of the, the light or the sparkle from the water. Maybe I've got a couple in through here. So I'm really kind of finding some of my what were already light spots and just adding a bit more intensity to them. I want some kind of coming down this center area as if, you know, these are maybe just another, um, you know, a platform that kind of pops out just a little bit more than the rest. And then I think I want that one to stay a little bit darker as if it's kind of shadowed over on that right hand side. So that's looking pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a little bit of um, brown and blue and white on my brush. So I have a tiny bit of brown, blue, and white on my brush. So little that I'm even gonna just kind of wipe it off on my paper towel. And I'm gonna add some of these blue type of notes down this center area where I'm gonna have my water falling down in through here. So again, this is gonna help to give me a, a sense of shininess to, the, to these rocks, allowing for them to almost look like they're they're twinkling parts of the sky off of them. And the brown is just helping to neutralize that color a little bit so it's not too too bright. And I'm thinking that that's pretty good. Maybe a couple of little twinkles and some of these little lighter spots in through here. Now what I'm gonna do is without washing my brush, I'm picking up a little bit of red on my brush. So I, I didn't wash my brush, so I really have very little bit of paint on there. The, um, the red now, I'm gonna just kind of add little pops of this red in through some of these uh, rocks in through here. And again, maybe maybe it is shining from some of the, the tree branches that are gonna be illuminating our scenery in a little while. And I'm not doing much. I'm just kind of allowing myself to intermingle a little bit of this color every now and again. You don't necessarily need to put it over the whole thing. I'm just kind of adding these additional notes of colors so it it harmonizes the whole painting maybe we got a little bit more in through here i'm thinking that that's pretty good uh, i'm gonna uh, amp up a little bit more of my white right now so i'm picking up a touch more white i really want to have a couple more little sparkles on some of these pieces in through here as they are uh, you know, maybe just a little bit wetter than others. I do have my waterfall that's going to be coming down in through here, so I don't necessarily need to do too much in that area, but I'm just making sure that I have as much brightness as I want to. And then what I would do is I would, I would let it dry for a minute. Actually, I'm going to pick up a little bit more brown. I'm going to add a little bit more brown in these guys over here. I'm going to let mine dry just a little bit and see if there's any areas that I feel that I would want to add any more color or take away any more color. And so, cause like, I feel this is pretty good in through here. These are pretty good. I'm gonna have lots of trees and stuff over in that area, but I wanna make sure that I've got as much color represented and that you can really see the edges of these rocks almost as if they're in kind of rows. So I'll let mine dry a minute. And if there's any additional 
you know, highlights I want to put, I certainly will. Or if I want to make any more red marks, I certainly will. But I'm thinking that that's looking pretty good. Picking up a little bit more blue right now, just a touch more. <laughs> I, I like the blue in, in this background here. So I am just added a little bit more. And then we are going to be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your rocks done, you can wash and dry your bright brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint some moss on our rocks. I'm gonna be using my bright brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are my custom green, yellow, red, and white. And if there's any other colors that I use, I'll let you know. So I'm gonna start with my custom green. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this to lay out where I want my moss or foliage. You can picture this to be little trees coming, but I'm picturing it to be just kind of green mossy stuff kind of just growing out the cracks of my rocks. So I'm going to put maybe some coming in through here. I'm using this brush in a dotting or stippling type of technique. So I'm just taking it and I'm dabbing it into the canvas. I'm going to have a whole bunch coming out over in through here. I'm also going to have it looking as if it's kind of draping over the sides of some of these rocks. So I can take this and almost kind of pull it down in these almost like rows kind of coming down, these little formations of foliage just draping over the sides of the rocks. I am going to be having a big a tree down in through here. So this will take up a lot of this area. So that's a good start on that side. Now on this side over here, I'm gonna have some draping over the top of my um, of my rocks in through here and maybe just kind of coming and snaking their way down this little face of the of the rock formation in through here and again we're gonna have a big tree coming up here so this is really just background information um, to support the color, all of the colors in the in the painting to give the painting a little bit more life again right now I'm just concentrating on using my uh, custom green to to lay out a little bit again of a, a little bit of a road map where I want these to go maybe on this ledge in through here we've got some just kind of making their way in between these rocks maybe I've got a nice formation if my waterfall is going to come kind of in this direction I think I want to have one somewhere in here this will look nice if I've got a nice kind of bit of greenery coming down in through here. So you can kind of sneak it in between some of these dark spots. So once I've got that in there, I think that's looking pretty good. You could put a, a smudge down at the bottom too, I suppose, if you wanted to. Uh, we're gonna close off the water to the rocks in a minute, but right now that's looking pretty good. So now what I'm gonna do without washing my brush, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of yellow and white. So I have my custom green, a little bit of yellow and a little bit of white. And what I'm gonna do is I need to make sure I have less paint on my brush. I just wiped it off. I don't want a lot of paint on my brush. So that was too much paint. So I wiped it off on my paper towel and I'm gonna just kind of tap this in. I'm, I'm, what I'm doing right now is just giving myself a little bit of diversity in the, in the greenery. I'm not getting rid of all that dark green that I put on there initially. This lighter version that I'm creating on the fly is just enhancing that dark green so we can see it. I don't, I still have some darkness in through there and then I'm just making these little kind of lighter um, edges to it. I will in a second incorporate even another color on top of this but this is again just kind of building my way towards a little bit lighter version of my um, greenery allowing me to have this nice diversity and dimension within it. So again, just kind of tapping my brush. You could use a, a different type of brush. You could be using a round brush or you could even use like a bristly type brush. But I knew that I wanted to have minimal um, uh, different shapes when it came to these leaves. So I just chose to use this type of brush where I'd get, um, where I'd get these distinct little marks in through here. And then once I've got this 
uh, light again I'm using my dark green yellow and white on my brush at the same time so I've got some lighter areas and some darker areas adding um, this bit in through here so now I've got that on there now I want to add a little bit of the autumn feel to it so this is where my red is going to come into play so I can use again yellow and red on my dirty brush which is going to give me a bit of an orange type of a tone and I'm just going to pop it in here and that may be a little bit more white so it turns a little bit brighter in through here and this again just adds to that autumn type of feel i don't need to do much just kind of popping in this little accent of um, warmth to these and you can feel free to kind of spin your brush in whatever way you want i just kind of keep tapping my brush in different directions to give me this these little bits of um different foliage kind of popping out at the top and make it you don't have to put it on all of them you can put it on just a couple if you want to i feel like i i feel like i'm i don't want to do it anymore so i'm just gonna pick up a little bit of white now and just give myself just a couple of even brighter pieces and then I am going to be using my large brush for the next step. So once you've got your moss within your um, rocks, you can put this flat or this bright brush away, take out your large brush and get ready, your little large bristle brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the pool of water. I'm using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm going to use are my custom green, black, and white. And what I'm looking to do here is put a second coat on my water. I want to close up or make sure that there's a, a, a seamless transition between my rocks and my water. And then I'm going to start the reflective area for my waterfall. So my waterfall is going to be kind of coming down into this vicinity and I want a little bit of lightness kind of to start to emerge in my water. So I'm going to start by using my green and just doing another coat on my water surface. This way I am ensuring that I have full coverage it's going to look nice and smooth, nice and glassy, and just like a beautiful little oasis in the middle of wherever this beautiful setting is. I'm bringing it right to the edge of my, um, where the black rock area meets. In a second, I'm going to pick up a tiny touch of black paint in order to close this off, but I'm just making sure I got my green all the way there to um, to start. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of black paint on the edge of my dirty brush and I just want to make sure that I have a nice seamless kind of transition. It can even come, this darkness can even come into the water a little bit. It doesn't have to be a perfectly um, round edge to it. You can see it. I'm just allowing this to have almost these little shadowy areas coming into the water. And what that's going to do is it's going to make it appear that there's light spots and dark spots within um, the water or areas where it's deeper or more shallow within the water. I'm just looking to make sure that I have this fully painted and that I've got a little bit of this shadowy type of um, reflective deep kind of qualities around the edges of that water where it's meeting the bank. And then once I've got that in there, I am going to wash and dry my brush because I know right now I have black paint on my brush and I don't really want to have black paint as I move into that lighter area of my, um, of my water. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush right now. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a tiny bit of my green and white on my brush. So an itty bitty bit of green and just a, when I say a tiny bit, I mean just a little tiny touch on my brush. My, my waterfall is gonna come down in this vicinity. So I'm gonna start right about in through here and I'm, I don't want it to go all the way back to the, to the back end of my water. I'm a little bit away from that and I'm gonna just give myself this little bit of a lighter area in through here and I don't need it to be much lighter, but a little bit is good. I'm adding a touch more white on my brush right now. We are going to be adding an additional 
reflection when we when we do the waterfall itself. So if yours doesn't turn out exactly as you had hoped at this point, don't worry about it. This is just starting the process. It's allowing for us to get this beautiful light area to start to um, form in the water. I'm adding a tiny bit more white. I'm adding the white as I feel I need it. I didn't want to go too far initially, so that's why I just added a tiny bit of white, and then I just kind of rub it left to right like this, and it's provided me even these lighter tones throughout the rest of the water. So feel free to make it even lighter if you want to, but once we add the um, the reflection, I just put a little bit more light on my brush. I keep adding just a little bit more at a time. Um, once we, when we go to add the reflection in the water, we'll be able to add a little bit more. So this is looking pretty good to me. So what we're gonna do for the next step, we're gonna be using our fan brush for the next step. So you can put this large brush away, take out your fan brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint a waterfall. I'm gonna be using my fan brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are black and white and blue and my custom green. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-mix myself a gray color, which will be the base to the water for my waterfall. I'm gonna be using very thinned out paint, so I'll use it with a little bit of either liquid medium or water. My liquid of choice is water, but you could certainly use either. I'm gonna be starting it up in through here, and then I'm gonna be pulling it down into my waterfall. We will then make a nice reflection, and we'll do some little splashes coming up. The trick to this is, again, you never need a lot of paint on your brush. I'm gonna be using my fan brush in order to kind of give me these this curving of the water coming off, and then some really thin singular pieces falling to the um, to the pool below. It is going to have a little bit of a curve on it coming out of the waterfall, but then it does eventually just kind of gravity will take over. There might be some spray that comes out a little bit at a curved way. There's going to be thicker, you know, more water coming in one area than another because I'm going to have a main waterfall in through here, and then I'll have one kind of come in down here and have it like splitting into two coming off of this little ledge here. So I'm going to pre-mix myself a gray color. This is what I've done here. I pre-mixed it so you can see where I'm headed. I used white paint and just a teeny tiny touch of black paint, give myself this medium to light gray type of color. Then what I'm gonna do, I do not want a lot of paint on my brush. So I'm gonna wipe my, my brush off on my paper towel so I have very little paint and then I'm going to dip my brush in water. So this way I have a lot of fluid in my bristles. I can even tap it off on my paper towel. So I have very minimal paint and a good amount of liquid in my bristles. I'm going to start up in through here and I'm going to bring it down to I would say probably right about here. And because I have quite a bit of water on my brush, you're gonna be able to see through the strands or the pieces of water that I'm, I'm bringing down. I'm bringing this down in through here. And I wanna be able to see the fall or the rocks behind it. So that's my goal here. I'm Right now I'm picking up more water on my brush so I can get this to be a little bit more transparent bring in maybe a couple of pieces spraying out in through here. So maybe these are the, the um, you know, more powerful ones that are just kind of flying out of the, the center of the waterfall. I'm bringing some of these down in through here. And then I just kind of keep playing with this until I feel that I've got it um, spread out enough. I will be uh, adding some brighter stuff to it in a minute. This is just the kind of the base coat of it. I'm gonna bring some kind of straight down in through here as if it came here and then just fell straight down. And maybe it doesn't even meet the, the, the water down in through here. This is where it's gonna meet in through here. So it's gonna be splashy kind of in through here. Maybe just kind of pop up a couple of initial splashes while I've got 
the um, gray mixture on my brush and then maybe I'm gonna, I'm gonna start my reflection of it. So I'm just bringing it out in this direction. I, I haven't re loaded my brush. It's just that gray with a tiny bit of water on my brush. I'm gonna bring this all the way over into here and then just kind of make it wider as it's close to the fall itself. So that's looking pretty good on that one. I'm gonna do my other ones. Again, just a little bit of that gray plus water on my brush. I'm gonna have one coming out in through here. This one is gonna meet this rock right in through here and then it's gonna bounce off of that rock. <laughs> so I've got it here and then it's gonna land here and come off again and go down into, I would say somewhere in this vicinity. So we're gonna curve it here and bring it down. So anywhere you want it to bounce off of, if your ledge is down here, you can have this coming fly, you know, dropping down and bouncing off of a ledge here, or maybe it just goes straight down to the water. You can, you get to tell the viewer what's happening with your waterfall. This is a waterfall that I created, so you don't have to feel like you're modeling it after a, a real place in, in the world. <laughs> this is just, this is an imaginary waterfall. So you can r have fun with doing that. And maybe, maybe this water right in through here kind of piles up in through here and then comes and falls off of this little side. Maybe there's a little, you know, valley in that rock and it makes it fall off here too. So you can certainly, you know, as you're doing this, if you feel it looks like it should be falling off somewhere else, maybe I've got a little tiny piece coming off in through here. I hardly have any paint on my brush right now. Maybe this one goes up in front of that little rock. So maybe this just kind of comes straight down like that. Because I have hardly any paint on my brush, it's allowing for these really faint kind of um, sprays of water to give the illusion of it kind of um, being see-through and very, um, very thin, uh, so to speak. I'm gonna let it land somewhere in through here, just kind of tapping my brush like that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I still haven't reloaded my, oh yeah, I did reload my brush in between these. I'm like, wow, I still haven't even reloaded my brush. These ones are more narrow, so I'm gonna make my reflection a little bit more narrow, just kind of moving my brush left to right and um, giving it this elongated type of reflection. Maybe it's maybe it's rippling the water over into here. Maybe it's something, one of these fell into here. So maybe it's giving a little bit of ripple in this water and through there. So now that I've got that on there, I don't wanna go all the way white until I'm ready to go white. So what I'm gonna do with my dirty brush is I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of white and a tiny bit of blue. That was way too much blue. Hold on one second. I need to wash my brush for that one. So I, again, I don't want to go all the way white. So I'm going to pick up white with just a teeny tiny bit of blue. And this way I'm working my way towards the white without going white all the way first. And this is going to give me the great dimension in the water. So this is white with a tiny bit of blue. I'm going to just kind of bring this up towards the top and bring just a little bit of it down. I don't wanna fully paint over the entire first layer of my waterfall, but I do want some. So I'm just using just a little bit. I'm leaving some of these stragglers out on the sides without new paint on it. I'm gonna do the same thing in the water. So this is blue plus uh, a little bit of white or white with a little bit of blue, <laughs> hardly any blue. Maybe we've got little sparkles or little sprinkles in through there. And you might find that as you're doing this that the blue, you love it. So put more of it in there. The blue is just gonna make it look like it's reflecting those sky colors. So feel free to bring it into whatever brightness that you want. I'm gonna put a little bit more up in through here. So again, this is my blue plus a little bit of white, making sure that what I do on one, I do on the other so it looks like they all belong together and that they it, that I've given the same type of um, build to each of them, even if one is gonna have a little bit less detail on it than the other one, that's okay, you still kind of add 
that the same layering um, effect, whether or not you're doing more or less from one to the next. That looks pretty good. Put a tiny bit in through here. And then what I'm gonna do is, before I start adding my white on there, I wanna add a little bit more brightness to my water. So without washing my brush, I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of my green plus white. So I put a little bit of my custom green plus white because I want this water to look a little bit brighter in through here. So I'm just adding, before I add the white from the waterfall, I'm adding a little bit more brightness in my water with the yellow or the um, green and the white in this uh, middle area. And you can keep adding the green as much as you want just to kind of get this um, center area to be as bright as you want to have as, as much depth and dimension to it as you want. I'm not doing a whole heck of a lot, but I am adding, you know, just a little bit more of that um, brightness from the from the green with those yellowish kind of tones to it. I'm adding just a little bit more in through here, just because I felt like I needed or wanted a little bit more life to that water, maybe even a little bit more ripples as, it's, uh, as the water is dropping into the um, pool. From the from the falls maybe a little bit more ripples in through there would would make sense they make sense to me so I'm just adding them in here and a little bit more lightness so that's looking pretty good now I'm gonna go in for my bright white so I need to wash my brush because I have a little bit of that green on there so I'm washing my brush and I'm picking up just white paint and not a lot again a little bit on my brush I can always add more to the canvas but it's tough to take it away. So just a little bit on my brush. I did not add any water this time, just white paint. And I'm gonna add my bright pieces on this outside here. And I can keep adding as much as I want. So as I start this process, I proceed with caution. I'm doing quite a bit up at the top and then I'm gonna just have it kind of fall down in through here. You can have spots that are thicker than others. So if you have like a bright spot here and a dark spot here, it's going to look like there's more water here. So you can play with um, how thick you want that fall to look. And as I come down in through here, I can, I actually, I'm going to add a tiny bit of water to my brush just so I can get this to look a little bit smoother. So it doesn't look so um, rough. There we go. That looks pretty good. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit on this one and a little bit on this one. And then I would just kind of keep fiddling with it. I'm going to put some down in the splashes down below as well. But this is looking pretty good to me. And then I'm going to, I'm still picking up just my white paint. Going to add quite a bit of brightness in through here as it's hitting the water the pool down below and making some splashes coming up here. So because I did not start with just white and I am finishing with white, I'm getting these great dimensional elements within the water itself. So if you see it close, you can it makes it look more three dimensional as opposed to just one flat color of, of white paint. So this will give you that those elements of being able to see through some of the paint, giving it some thick spots, some thin spots, and then I would just keep fiddling with it. So once I've got my white on, I would let it dry for a minute. I'd step away, see if there's any additional areas that I felt maybe could use more or less, and I would make those adjustments. And then we're gonna be using our bright brush for the next step. So once you've got your waterfall done, you can put this fan brush away, take out your bright brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint some tree trunks and branches. I'm gonna be using my bright brush. I'm gonna be using black, brown, and white. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make these pretty silhouetted. So they're gonna be almost black with just little hints of highlights throughout them. I want them to look like they're in a wet environment. So I want them, the tree trunks and branches to look pretty dark being that they have lots of moisture in them, they may take on a darker look. Plus they're on the up, we're seeing the opposite side from the light source. So my light source is here. We're seeing the opposite side of these branches and stuff. So to me, they, that would be the darker side of them anyways. I don't want them to steal the show of my focal point, which to me is the waterfall. So that's why I'm just gonna have them nice and dark. What I'm gonna do is I'm using this 
brush for this step because I think it's fun to be able to use a tool such as this to make wide uh, marks and then spinning it uh, and using it in a narrow way to make narrow marks. So we'll be using it for the trunks, for the wide trunks, and then you can spin it and make more narrow branches and I'll show you how to do that. So I'm gonna start with black paint on my brush. I'm gonna do a really big one over here on the left hand side. I'm gonna have it all the way down toward the bottom left hand corner and I'm gonna mark how far up I want it to go or where I want it to go up top so you can kind of get a good gauge. I'm gonna come about three or four inches in from the left hand side, so somewhere in through here. I'm gonna just use my brush on its wide side and give myself a really long kind of thick trunk in through here. I'm not making it super straight on purpose. I want it to have some lumps and bumps. And I also want it to be a bit wider as it gets down towards the base. So I'm gonna bring it off my canvas a little bit higher. So off my canvas right about in through here and then bring that, that trunk area down like this. Now that I've got the, the trunk in, what I can do is I can make some great branches off of this. So. I'm gonna have some pretty heavy, you know, bigger branches, but I don't, again, want them to take up too much of my uh, canvas, so I'm gonna be mindful as to where I put them. I'm gonna have this one coming up in about this area, and I'm using the slender side of my brush right now to create these. I'm gonna have this one kind of hanging over in this direction. I'm also gonna have, um, leaves on the ends of these branches as well. So I don't need to do too much to them. I can really not care as much for the little tips of them, which again is a great um, time to be using a brush like this because you don't need those the, the ends of those branches to be skinny and perfect. This one I'm gonna just kind of bring up in this direction. I'm gonna have maybe one of the branches kind of coming over in through here and then maybe a couple branches coming off of here. Again, I know I'm gonna have lots of little uh, leaves and stuff coming off of these, so I don't need for there to be a, a bunch of detail on here. I'm just kind of flying through, maybe making one kind of coming a uh, taller branch of sorts, maybe coming up in through here. And as I'm doing this, I'm modeling this tree after I was looking at some really beautiful landscapes. There's, uh, these trees are uh, some kind of Asian type of a species tree that I'm modeling it after with these dark trunks and branches and these real vibrant red autumn leaves. But you could certainly model yours after a type of tree that is indigenous to where you live it can be an imaginary tree. So feel free, if you're going through this process, if, you're, if your branches are starting to look like a different type of tree than mine are, just roll with it. There's no, there's no reason that it needs to be exactly as mine. On the right hand side, I'm gonna have a little tree down here, and then I'm gonna have just a peekaboo edge of a taller tree up and through there. So I'm just gonna use uh, my brush on the narrow side again, and I'm gonna have just kind of a tree, I would say, I'm gonna just kind of bring a little trunk in through here, and then maybe just a couple of little branches strategically over my light rocks so you can see the, um, that you can see the trunk of them. So that way, you know, you can, you can plan your branches in front of a light rock, so that way the evidence of that branch and stuff, it will, will, be able to be seen when you start putting the details on it. So that's looking pretty good for that one. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do one coming up off the side of my canvas in through here. And maybe this one is a little bit wider, implying that it is closer to the viewer, but we are just kind of seeing little branches coming off of it. Maybe, maybe a couple branches come off the side in through there. And then maybe I've got one or two kind of coming down in through here. And then I would just kind of, um, make as, as many branches as you want. I'm gonna right now put a little bit of brown and white on my brush so I can have 
a bit of uh, dimension in these branches and in the in the trunks but again I don't need to do much so I'm just gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel so I still have a little bit of black on there and now I'm gonna pick up brown and a teeny touch of white so I have brown on my brush which is an itty bitty bit of white and you can even just tap it off on your paper towel and again I'm just hard I just want to get just a tiny bit of dimension in in here without overwhelming the appearance of it so just brown with a teeny tiny bit of white paint and if you do this and you say mm, I don't really like that at all I, I prefer it to be black then go ahead and leave those leave those trunks black because again they're not the star of the show they are really just kind of framing our painting I don't even think I'm gonna put any on that one because I want that one to be visible in front of that rock so I'm gonna just put a little bit of it up here on this one and then I'm gonna call it I will be using my lot my large bristle brush for the next step so once you've got your tree trunks and branches done you can put this uh, bright brush away take out your large brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint our autumn leaves on these front trees I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush the colors I'm using are brown red yellow and white and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make my we'll call it my dark layer first and then I'm gonna build my way to the light these are very dark rich red leaves so I want to keep the integrity of them being just this beautiful dark rich red color so I'm not gonna be adding a lot of highlight to them but I do want to have them with a lot of dimension to them so I'm gonna start pretty dark with my brown and red first Plus, we have a pretty dark background that they're on, so we'll lay down that darkness and then we'll build our way to some real vibrant, rich red color. So I'm going to start with about equal parts of red and brown on my brush at the same time. You can really start anywhere, but I think I'm going to start up here in the top left hand corner and I'm going to be applying this with a dotting or stippling type of technique. As I do this, I am looking to kind of hide all the tips of my branches because I know I didn't do an awesome job with um, making those perfect. So because I knew I was going to be doing this step. Um, so as I go through this process, I will be conscious about covering those. But if you have beautiful tips to the edges of your leaves, you don't have to cover all yours. And as I'm going through this process, I'm doing a pretty heavy um, paint. I've got a pretty good heavy amount of paint on my brush, but I know in a minute I'm going to be coming back and putting a second layer, so I don't need to glob it on a, a ton. I don't need to pick up as much paint as I have on my palette and start globbing it on. I just really want to have a good um, place to start with this red and the brown. I am going to be leaving peekaboo spots of my trunk throughout, uh, the, throughout the process as well as peekaboo spots of my branches. I'm going to be kind of dotting some of these and bringing them in front of my rock formation. Again, you can bring these leaves in front of the, the trunks and the branches. I'm just getting this stippling type of technique on here with these nice kind of frayed or, you know, fluffy type of edges without it looking too uniform. I'm going to put some up in through here and leaving some of that um, background showing as well. I'm going to continue to put some up in through here. Again, red and brown. As you work your way towards this center area, you could certainly be using more red as opposed to um, brown. But again, I'm going for this kind of darker appearance of them so I'm going to just continue to use both those colors and maybe just less paint on my brush as I'm getting towards the center area but again whatever is working for you <laughs> is completely fine and then I'm going to just go ahead and put some in through here and leaves are great for hiding certain things so if you're going about it and you're like oh I don't like that branch just put some leaves in front of it and it'll be fine but I'm leaving those peekaboo spots I'm picking up some more red and brown as I come down I got these two little guys down here so this one I think I'm going to have almost like little sections of the tree maybe we got one the top little section and maybe there's a little section in between like that and then maybe I have some on this 
little branch here. Well, he probably needs a little bit more than that. Maybe some, oh, that was a little extra red there. I need a little bit more brown. Um, maybe some in through here on the edges of these branches. Yeah, that looks pretty neat. Maybe this one comes out a little further. <laughs> You just make whatever looks good in your, that looks, I like that. All right, and then this one down in through here, this one's going to hang over my, my water a little bit. So I'm going to put some in through here. I like that green back there, so I don't necessarily want to cover up all of that. This looks pretty good. Maybe some hanging in through here. I also feel that I, I kind of want some um, little leaves in my water. I'm just going to put a couple of little dots in my water as if maybe some little leaves have fallen into the water. You don't have to do that. I'm just feeling like that's what I want to do right now. So now that I've got that on there, I am going to wash and dry my brush for some clean red. And I'm, I, So I'm getting that brown off of my brush and I'm going to go in for clean red right now is going to be my my working my way to my bright stuff. So now is the time where I can start loading it on pretty heavy. So I put more red on my brush and when I go in for this next layer, I'm not going to cover up all that dark um, layer that I did. I'm, I'm conscious about just adding more vibrancy, but I want it to have dimension. So I'm leaving some of those darker leaves that we put on there. This bright red is just acting as that second coat that maybe maybe some of these leaves are more towards the top and they're they've got brighter um hues to them and i'm allowing i'm putting the paint thicker so you can't see through it as well in certain spots so again i can see peekaboo spots of those branches which is great that would definitely happen um, but i want to be able to make these look like they've got some good substance to them and that they're not that they're not all just see-through paint so that's why i'm i'm putting the red on pretty darn thick in um in a lot of these areas so it has that um more true just you know vibrancy to it and then once i've got some good red stuff on here and again i'm leaving some of the that um those darker tones in there and I'm putting some of this red more towards the top. I'm gonna to come down here, give myself a little bit more of this vibrancy towards the top. So I'm building my way towards, towards the um, bright leaves with just red. I, I used that brown on that first layer in order to give me depth in it. Plus I know that my red is transparent or translucent. So the, the thicker I put it on, which is what I'm doing in the second time, the more true to my red it's going to be, the more vibrant it's going to be, the more you're going to detect that red. So I'm building this in a way that is simple for me without having to use too many different colors. I'm just using the transparency of the paint to my advantage in order to work my way towards these lighter, these lighter regions. And then once I've got that, now I just need to make a decision if I want to add yellow to it. So I'm going to add a little bit of yellow maybe towards the tips in through here as if they're getting hit by the sunshine, but I don't want it yellow yellow. So I'm going to use my red plus yellow on my brush at the same time. So it's more of just like an orangey tone and I can just kind of tap in little bits on the edges in through here. Again, I don't, I don't want a super yellow leaf to appear. So I'm just making it almost um, blending it with my red so I've got just these little orange notes around the edges. Maybe even this one in through here gets a bit too. I think this one's the one I'm going to use a tiny bit of white as well. So just my dirty brush has red, yellow, and white and I'm tapping it on my brush. So this way I've got maybe a couple of little twinkles of brighter leaves on here maybe from that sunshine. And then after I get this done, I would let it dry. Well, maybe add this on my little leaves in my water too. <laughs> you could use a small brush for these tiny little leaves. Um, and then once I've got this done, maybe touch in through here too. Once I've got this done, I would let it dry. And if there's any additional stuff that I wanna do, I certainly will. And then we have one little step left to go with our small brush. So once you've got this done, you can wash or put this large brush away take out your small brush and 
get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I know that I said take out your small brush, which that didn't make any sense because I didn't identify anything as a small brush. You have your fan brush, you have your bright brush, and you have your large bristle brush. So for me, I'm gonna be using my bright brush to sign my name today. You could certainly use any brush that you want. You could, if you have small round brushes, you could use those, but I'm gonna have my, I'm gonna have fun with my bright brush and I think I'm gonna sign mine down in the bottom left with black paint and I'm going to be signing it with my initials but we're gonna make little block letters today so my initials are M and I so I'm gonna do my signature like that today and you could certainly sign yours however you want it's your painting so you get to sign it however you like and that's gonna conclude this painting I hope you enjoyed the process I hope you painted yourself a beautiful fall, fall, <laughs> autumn waterfall, and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.